physics chapter 23 theory video uh, uh, 3 <coughs> uh, so I'm sure that you have done the question 5 and 6 now we are going to move on to a practical activity 23.1 here what we are going to investigate is the amount of energy that can be stored in a capacitor uh, so we have as we as you can remember we use uh, we only store a very small amount of charge so as a result we have to have a uh, highly sensitive joule uh, joule meter that is uh, something that can uh, measure millijoules uh, so then uh, we we develop a proper um, we develop a proper uh, uh, proper system or uh, circuit which would uh, which would charge uh, which would charge the capacitor when it is uh, connected to the power supply. So here uh, what happens is uh, we have to uh, you know we have to make sure that uh, you know there is a switch in between when it connects to the power supply it would uh, the uh, the capacitor would get charged and when it is uh, uh, switched off when uh, when it is altered uh, the, what happens is capacitor would discharge then the discharge should happen through the joule meter so then we can find out uh, uh, the amount of energy that would be released by the capacitor uh, so then if we use different capacitors of uh, capacitance C that is C different values of C uh, we can uh, uh, we can find out we can get different values then also if we can change the voltage we uh, we can uh, figure out how the energy would depend on c and v so this is how it is going to happen uh, when you connect the um, when you connect the uh, uh, when you connect the uh, system when you connect the uh, when you connect it from here the power supply is there uh, at this point so when it is connected it will become it will get charged but when it is uh, altered when it uh, switch gets switched on to the other side then it will uh, discharge the uh, the discharge the power uh, that is stored through the uh, voltmeter uh, through the joule meter so what you can see here is uh, uh, that uh, in the initial run initially it is connected uh, to this circuit this circuit here then it gets charged then after it is done uh, after it is done you connect it here like this you connect it here like this and then this circuit that you know voltage is broken now now only this circuit is complete only this circuit is complete so then it gets discharged I hope you understood that so by varying the voltage and also the capacitance we can get different values and we can understand how uh, CV C and uh, capacitance and voltage uh, you know would decide what um, the amount of uh, energy uh, that would be uh, that would be stored in the the capacitor so after uh, you have uh, you know after completing five six and five six questions you can move to seven eight nine and ten and if you have any questions you can ask me of course now we are going to go into capacitors in parallel uh, after we have discussed this we will write the note on the uh, practical uh, practical ex experiment as well now uh, we know that capacitors are used in uh, circuits to store uh, small amounts of energies to function a particular part or a smaller circuit within the system uh, when uh, so sometimes uh, you know it it, it it is required for us to connect one or two uh, uh, more than two more than two or more uh, capacitors together so when two or more capacitors are connected obviously you know that they can be either connected in parallel or they can be connected in series 
So here we are going to discuss about uh, how in the first part we are going to discuss about uh, parallelly connected capacitors. Uh, so you have learnt in earlier lessons how uh, parallelly connected uh, uh, parallel con different devices when parallelly con connected the effect uh, effect of that. For example, um, when uh, res resistor when the resistors are connected parallelly, you know how to find the combined resistance. So here, what are we going to do to find the uh, capacity the, the the total capacitance? When uh, two uh, parallel uh, two capacitors are connected in parallel, as shown here, uh, their combined resistance or the total uh, com my, my apologies combined capacitance or the total capacitance C total is taken by the addition of the two capacitances. So this is completely different from what you have learnt in. Um, the uh, learned uh, in relation to resistors, right? So here, what we do is we add that uh, you know to get C total capacitance total, we add uh, C one and C two together. So this is done for parallelly connected capacitors. So it, uh, I hope it makes sense. Then. Uh, now what happens is the reason why that happens is when two capacitors are connected together now you know that it is capacitors work by two plates which are charged uh, when there are two that are uh, you know in place they uh, you know they um, uh, they represent or they uh, they will actually uh, get together to produce us you know it 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 uh, appears like they are getting together to produce a single bigger plate. As a result, uh, the capacitance would increase. So that is why that is the explanation for that. Uh, so if the capacitors are connected in parallel, you get the C total by adding the capacitors together. Uh, therefore, the total charge on two capacitors uh, connected in parallel and uh, charged to a potential difference V is Q equals C total into V. So if there are more uh, capacitors, it would be simply the same thing C1 plus C2 plus C3 etc. You go on uh, by adding all the capac capac capacitance values the, uh, uh, of the capacitors which are connected in uh, parallel. Now we are going to uh, find out how we can derive at this equation uh, uh, by taking uh, the charge on two capacitors. So here uh, the C1, the first one ch charge has a charge of Q1 and C2 stores a charge of Q2. So both of these are, uh, you know, there is a potential difference of V across them then we can take Q, Q1 charge from this equation we can take Q1 charge to be C1 into V and Q2 is equal to C2 into V. Then uh, the total charge because Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 C1 uh, V plus C2 V is going to give us the total charge. Because V is a common factor we get Q equals C1 plus C2 into V. Uh, then we compare C1 plus C2 is the total capacitance. Uh, then uh, Q equals C total V equation. When we get that equation, it actually goes together with it. Q equals C1 plus C2 V. So as a result, uh, we know uh, if there are more uh, capacitors, uh, it would go as C1 plus C2 C3. Uh, so the summary is this. Uh, if there are if the capacitors are in parallel the pd across each capacitor is the same the potential difference is the same as shown uh, earlier we discussed here the uh, capacitor the potential difference is v uh, then uh, the total charge on the capacitor is equal to the sum of the charges and the total capacitance c total is equal to the uh, sum of the capacitances 
uh, of each uh, capacitor. So those are the key equations and it is not very hard. I want you to do question number 11 and 12 after you have attempted uh, these things. Now let's, uh, let's uh, do a note on uh, what we have learned and then go to capacitances connected in series. Write down practical activity 23.1. To investigate the amount of energy stored in a capacitor, A sensitive joule meter capable of a sensitive joule meter capable of measuring millijoules simple M capital J is connected as is connected to a circuit as shown below. I want you to uh, uh, put circuit 1 for this one and for this circuit 2, circuit 2, then it would make sense, uh, what we are saying would make sense. When the switch is connected to, when the switch is connected to circuit 1, the capacitor will get charged after it is fully charged the switch is altered to connect the to connect the circuit to then the capacitor would discharge through the joule meter the capacitor would discharge through the joule meter. This will allow us to understand how the energy stored can be changed by varying capacitance and voltage right uh, so uh, I hope you have done question number seven eight nine and ten if you have any difficulties please raise them then write down capacitors in parallel when two or more capacitors are connected in parallel they are combined or the total capacitance is obtained by getting their sum C total equals C1 plus C2 this is because when capacitors are connected in parallel, they act as if they are a single capacitor. The total charge on the two capacitors can be, ob uh, can be obtained by Q equals C total into V. So what you need, another thing that you need to figure out is this V is not going to differ for each uh, capacitor. The capacitance might vary but the voltage is the same because they are connected to the same circuit. Then leave a line, put a star and write down. If there are uh, three or if there are more capacitors, the total capacitance is C total equals C1 plus C2 plus C3 
plus etc. The above equation is derived as follows. Uh, please draw this uh, circuit. And leave a line and write. The charge on Q1 equals C1 into V. And charge on second capacitor, uh, charge on C2 equals charge on Q2 equals C2 into V. Total charge of the system Q1 plus Q2 equals C1V plus C2V. After factorizing, we obtain the equation Q equals C1 plus C2V. When this is compared with the equation Q equals C total V, we understand that C total is equal to C1 plus C2 in the above situation. So I hope uh, you, uh, you understood and also uh, please remember uh, uh, deriving this equation is uh, can be a, a possible question at the examination so if you have any doubts please ask me and after you have done it please do question number 11 and 12 uh, the, after that we will move on to the next video